shield is leaking. He got a rear axle shield leaking. Um, he's got a couple other issues that we're going to address and uh, see what we can do to get him back on the road here. But uh, yep, yeah, just uh, had to get him in here, get him out. I promised him this uh, for about six months, so we're going to get him fixed up. Let's see what we got. Oh, pull the st uh, steering stabilizer up out of the way. Draining the uh, differential fluid out. Bottom plug there. Uh, take these bolts out of this front cover. Drop the cover off. So we need to replace the inner seals on this. Uh, it's a Dana 40. It's a Rubicon, so it's got a Dana 44 in it. But um, we need to. Uh, get these inner seals that are leaking. So the whole differential carrier's gotta come out and we'll, uh, we'll show you how that, how that goes next. On to the front now, uh, the rear's all buttoned up. Um, just waiting on the diff cover, uh, getting powder coated. So uh, jumping on the front here, we're gonna do the front uh, axle seals. Um, we already, if you remember, we pulled, pulled the cover off sent it out, getting it powder coated. Um, so now we're gonna pull this thing apart and put some new uh, inner axle seals in this thing and let's see, hopefully it goes uh, a little better than that rear uh, uh, one axle <laughs> gave me a tough time, but uh, let's see what happens. We're gonna pull off the caliper. We gotta replace it, it's bad already. You know that it's seized up, locked up. We're going to take off the uh, rotor and we'll work on the axle hub uh, nut here and get the axle hub bearing housing out of there, which hopefully it doesn't give us any trouble. out and actually they came out really well um, next thing we're gonna drop this uh, tie rod off of here and get that carrier out of there but uh, the driver side came out good too it actually was uh, looks like it's been replaced so that's a good thing thought that was gonna be a bear so looking good let's continue on let's get this uh, ring gear out with the carrier and uh, get to the seals. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull the second uh, steering stabilizer off. I had the one off it already that we pulled the diff cover off uh, to get it powder coated, but I'm gonna pull this one off. I'm just going ahead and pull the uh, this drag link out of here or this tie rod um, totally out of the way. I, just, I was thinking about hanging it uh, with a bungee, but I may just pull it out, get it out of the way. Good access to the differential now. Before we pull this out, we got to disconnect the electric uh, uh, locker in here. So here's the electrical connector up here. Uh, looks like an uh, eight millimeter wrench. So I've read about these being a bear to get out. So we're going to take our time and be careful because it is a dealer item if we bring it. <laughs> Turn 
trying it. I'm just hitting it sideways. I'm trying. I, I, I believe there's a no ring in there. So um, just kind of giving it some side force. I don't want to pry on it. It's plastic. Uh, I just want to break it loose. got it out <laughs> without breaking it not uh, it broke so uh, the little tab right here that uh, bolts to the little eight millimeter bolt as I was working it around it actually cracked and broke off I did notice when it's in there tight the way I got it out is I ended up going in through here gently with a pry bar and pushing it up on the actual end of this housing right here so inside pushing up very so gently not on not on the connector uh internal connector but on this one and it and it popped out um maybe that would have helped uh but i had to get it work and loose as you saw it was moving so We'll have to put a new one of those on. So now, I want to get this get this carrier out of here now. Uh, with the gears, we've got the electric connector loose. So we need to make sure these uh, bearing caps go back in the same orientation. Um, when I do my rears, I always, I always mark them with a punch. I go two and three, um, and I, I mark them on the cap, and then I mark them on the side of the case. Each side's going to have a shim in it. Okay, factory, you're going to have a machined one piece shim. If we were doing gears in this, of course, you get a shim pack, you could have multiple shims, you'd have a thick and a bunch of thin ones, all depends. But when you get a, a first time factory pull out rear, you're gonna have two solid shims. Do not get them mixed up. Again, lay them with the bearing caps because um, that will really uh, screw you up when you go back. So just make sure our electrical connector is out. I use two hands, I put my fingers inside the carrier and pull it, drop it down. And there it is. Um, again, just keep everything separated, uh, bearing uh, race ca uh, caps, uh, the bearing races, and the shim, sorry. You want to keep left and right down, I have them marked on the ground there. So now, we'll get, uh, get something long enough, we can come through the axle tubes, and we'll uh, knock these seals out, and uh, start putting it back together. both out. This was the culprit. Uh, hard to see. Doesn't look anything crazy, but I know this thing had ball joints done in it at some point by somebody. Um, so the axles had been in and out, and sometimes when you do that, well, it's still got the spring on it. Sometimes you, you jar it and uh, you get a leak. So, But put some new ones in. It's clean. We're going to clean this case out real good clean the tubes and we'll start setting the new uh, seals in here, the inner seals and start putting it back together. It all cleaned out, got the tubes cleaned. Getting ready to uh, press these uh, seals in and button it back up. Okay, we're gonna get this, uh, here's, here's the new seals and we got a 
this nice little uh, seal press here. Uh, Dana 44, uh, Dana 30s, uh, 60s, um, front axle seal, inner seals. So you go in here, just tighten it up a little bit. And again, there's other ways you can do this, but this, this, this mechanism works really nice. Just make sure you got it centered up pretty good. As easy as that. Pull that out. Nice. Nice and flush. Do the other side. And that's it. Okay, here we go. Now, this has an electric locker on the front. I've never done one of these before. This is my first time. So, <clears throat> um, they actually have this little switch right in here. I don't know if you can see that. So, right here. This is actually the, the it's, it's a, um, basically a switch to engage the light so when you turn the uh, electric locker button on it goes through that plug that's uh, we disconnected here and it, it actually um, engages a ring and it pulls this out so that will actually notify and show I guess the light on your dash is what I understand so we need to get that back on the ring of the carrier so I learned this little trick. Let me zoom back out. So guys that talk about making, this is a, uh, a match stick, taking a wooden match stick, tying some, uh, this is actually some fishing line. So I didn't have wooden match sticks. So what I did take is I took a piece of camping uh, <laughs> marshmallow stick and I cut it down, took a piece of fishing line off the boys uh, Caleb's fishing pole <laughs> and basically gonna stick this up in here make sure my string is in the center here I don't want to lose my string there you go Let's see if we can zoom Where's my production manager? So, as you can see, that little switch is now pulled out. Okay? And here's the string, we'll tuck the, the fishing line in there, and I'm gonna stick the carrier in, and once I get the carrier in, I can pull this line, fishing line out, and it will release that switch and go up against the ring. Let's see how it works. Okay. Let's watch that electrical connector there. I got my right bearing caps on. This is uh, where I stamped the two. Get that in there, and then I can, you know it's gonna hold.
All right, you see, we got the carrier in. We got the little uh, locker uh, engagement switch. We got the wire up through here. We'll put the sensor, get the new sensor, put it in, drop it in. Now we just need to torque these. Uh, Dana 44 is, uh, they're saying 80 foot pounds. She's done. Just get some axles in it and button this thing up. the new wheel and tire package. Well, same wheels, but we got them coated over at uh, Prestige Coating and Blasting in uh, Newark, Delaware. They look pretty good. Came out really good. So we got the same color as the springs on the Jeep. Um, so they went with Venom Power, um, Terror Hunters. I've never really heard of these uh, tires, but they look pretty good. They remind me of uh, the Nitto uh, Trail Grapplers. Had that same sidewall on it. So put them on the Jeep and uh, see how they turned out. All right, I got all the uh, bolts in the cover. I just got them loose, uh, finger tight in there right now. Um, letting this uh, RTV set up a little bit. I like to let it uh, set up and then we'll torque it down. Um, we have a plug to put in the bottom here, the drain plug. Uh, I have the plug that goes here. Obviously we can't put that in until we put oil, but just wanted to uh, see if you all know how to wrap Teflon on pipe threads. So as you can see, this is how the, the actual threads, the threads are going away from me. <clears throat> so you want to wrap in a counterclockwise, if you're looking at it, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So all you guys that are pipe fitters, counterclockwise. So when I turn this to tighten it, the tail is constantly be wrapping, uh, uh, is following it. So if you wrap it the other way, when you go to tighten, it actually unravels the Teflon. So um, if you're holding a piece of pipe, say this is the piece of pipe because these are pipe threads and it's away from you, counterclockwise. Now, if you had it facing your way, of course, you would end up going clockwise. But usually I hold it like this and wrap counterclockwise. So then I know the tail. As you can see, there's the tail. So when it's tightened, the tail will always follow. If, if it was the opposite, let's spin this around, and I had it wrapped this way and I tightened it, it would fold this back and you'll lose that Teflon seal. So there's a little tidbit for you. Yeah, it works on diff covers. This is a pipe thread. Works in your house and pipe fitting. Always make sure the tail, when you're tightening, is to the left and is following as you turn it clockwise. All right, let's get it done. Get these uh, have them set up a little bit. We're gonna get these torqued now and uh, put some fluid in it. Here you go. We got the new diff cover on. 
Got the stabilizer button back up. You can see that's uh, that's a pretty red. That's a chrome underneath base with a translucent red. Um, as you can see, would have been nice if uh, if he wanted to paint all that uh, undercarriage black again. That would be really sweet. But uh, we got it buttoned up and. Uh, we're going to get it down and uh, get you a look at it in the sun.